isn't it crazy to me that this series started off being serious at first, or at least fun, but now we've gone to the area where this is now being a straight up cartoon. I mean, I, I don't see that as a good or bad thing. I'm just saying it's kind of a whiplash if you think about it. how it started off being kind of intense and, and scary to think, you know, with Godzilla 2014 and then a, a fun but also kind of terrifying nature to it with Kong Skull Island. And now we've landed here. I mean, I guess that's the progression of how series goes. You just get to a point where you're like, you know what? Just throw everything at the wall. And everyone will love it. Because if you know the history of Godzilla, it's pretty much just going to be stupidity on full display. So just go along with it. Godzilla X Kong The New Empire it is once again directed by Anne Wingard with a screenplay by Terry Rossio, Simon Barrett, and Jeremy Slatter. And a story by Terry Rossio, Anne Wingard, and Simon Barrett. The film has, once again, some returning and some newcomers, including Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, Dan Stevens, Kylie Holtel, Alex Ferns, and Fala Chen. According to IMDb's plot synopsis, Two ancient titans, Godzilla and Kong, clash in an epic battle as humans unravel their intertwined origins and connection to Skull Island's mysteries. I was kind of curious to see what Anne Wingard would do again for a sequel, because after making Godzilla vs. Kong, you would assume that, alright, we're just now going to go back to making single films, or it just stops there. No, they're going to keep on going, which is interesting. So, making a sequel to it, which saw the Titans duking it out. Now this time around, they're just full-on teaming up. They, they fought once, so uh, we're cool now. Let's all just get along and let's fight monsters together. <laughs> the trailers looked crazy and silly in like a good way, because if some people know about Godzilla's history, Godzilla has always been silly and dumb, all right? Let's not be around the bush. It also started off serious, with the 1954 film, and then as time went on, they just got re more ridiculous and more insane the longer they went on. And some fans really like that. I'm just saying, that's just usually the progression. For America to try to do that, pretty good for them to, at the very least, go along with what Godzilla's trajectory was for a long time. I was prepared for a very over-the-top film. No question about it. Just from the first teaser or the first trailer i just knew automatically all right this is just gonna be over the top just walk into it with that mindset thankfully i did get that <laughs> i mean i wasn't expecting much but this was pretty much what i was expecting if fans have been wanting the wackier and zany version of the titans this is up their alley man i will say it's not a huge success but here are some of the positives that i found with the film the direction is on point Director Anne Wingard still keeps the same vibes as the last film. Wingard truly captures the goofy nature of these creatures. Which is good, because if you are following what Godzilla during his heyday, yeah, it did get <laughs> dumb and silly. And I think that's what fans were expecting at some point for them to kind of do, is to just full on embrace the stupidity of it. And Wingard does succeed in that, in making it the most zingy and ridiculous film out of this monster verse than the previous film. You know, Godzilla vs. Calm was over the top, but I mean, like, this this takes it to a whole new level. Like, we have now reached the jumping the shark of this series, even though you could say with the last movie it was, but really with this one, it truly, like, jumps the shark ten times over. And so, Wingard successfully, I think, continues that feeling of it being a Saturday morning cartoon very well. The action sequences are fun. Seeing both Godzilla and Kong fight against Scar King makes for a chaotic and exciting time. Happy to see the series keep up 
the fights as entertaining as they are. If they were not entertaining, if they were just dull and boring, then that would just be pointless. So for them to just go balls to the walls with the action, with the Titans fighting each other, or for, at the very least, to see this duo team up to fight another great threat, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty cool. There's nothing much I was asking for, at the very least, can you at least get these Titans to be as entertaining as they can be with regards to fighting each other? The answer is yes. I'm glad that they still are consistently doing that with the films, is making sure that the fights are as entertaining and as fun as they can be. The music is awesome. Composers Tom Holtenberg and Antonio Di Lorio continue to add some excitement and fun to the series. The music never disappoints. I'm glad at the very least the music still along with the action, is also keeping up with it. We're going crazy and outright insane with this one. Let's just do the same. Both composers did a good job of making sure that the music fits in line with the vibe of the film. Because if it was all seriousness, nobody would buy any of it. But thankfully, it fits the tone of it. And it works very well. The visuals are amazing. All the Titans, whether it's Godzilla, Palm, Scar King, Minicom, or Shimu, which is the newest creature in this film and I think has never appeared in any of the Godzilla films. They all look stunning. Once again, this area is always consistent. I'm glad at the very least the MonsterVerse, like with so many other areas that I've always said that I've enjoyed with their movies, is they are always consistent with the visuals. It may be sure one movie's better than the other, but I will say that both Godzilla and Kong still look fantastic. They still look amazing. I still like their design. I like the fact that Kong is much older. You could tell by his beard, pretty much. They point out how old he is. You also have the Scar King, which I thought was a unique design and very uh, interesting with his weapon choice. All, all the creatures across the board still look amazing. Cinematography is excellent. Cinematographer Ben Searson continues to capture the carnage and destruction of these Titans being the crap out of each other. Again, still consistent throughout. I'm very glad that no matter what happens, I could see it from a far angle and I could see all the carnage and chaos just being thrown on display. And that is because of Ben Searson's cinematography. Because if it had been or in sheer, you wouldn't be able to know what the hell's going on. So thankfully, he still continues that. All wide shots, medium shots, whenever creatures are fighting each other. Pacing and runtime works. Again, each scene keeps the flow as similar to Godzilla vs. Kong, that it doesn't let up. There's never a point where the movie just full-on drags out and stops, and that's it, is slowing down the pacing. Now, this movie keeps on going. With a runtime of 1 hour and 55 minutes, I'm glad it doesn't go past the 2-hour mark, because we would have another King of the Monsters situation, but thankfully, and Wingard and Co. know when to stop the film and be like, alright, that's it. We are almost near to close to being two hours. We are out of here, which is good because, it, again, always, if it had gone over that, it would just get dull. That's at least to me. I think a movie like this should not be over two hours. While fun, I will say, compared to Godzilla vs. Kong, I do think it is a letdown. Dare I say a disappointment me so here are some of the negatives that i found the story is a mess film bounces back and forth constantly between the titans and the humans so much that it just kind of loses a bit of focus but at the very least the titans are still the stars they don't shy away from them i'm just saying that the constant shifting of back and forth between the titans where you follow con and mini con discovering scar king and his plan versus the humans that <laughs> follow them and just don't add anything to the film other than just help out Kong once because otherwise they're just there for no reason so for them to constantly go back and forth with the humans and, and the titans it's still prevalent you could say that it was there in the last movie but not as much here very much so this feels like the human story w along with the titans just it, it, it's not well done because speaking of which the human characters are uninteresting. Whatever character development that both Andrews, once again, Rebecca Hall returns to playing, as well as Hayes, staying with Brian Tyree Henry, have, it's been reduced to the point of just being dull and flat. There's nothing exciting about them anymore. The actors are fine, but I would even say that they should try a little bit better. But when you're given this kind of material, I mean, you got to work with what you got to work with. Yeah, they just weren't given much. And so what we got instead was just very surface level and kind of very hollow. No pun intended with it, you know, the film also exploring hollow earth. 
This also implies for Trapper, played by Dan Stevens, only being a generic monster expert. Like, he's legit, like, the veterinarian. He's the one that helps all the monsters out with their problems. I mean, in the movie, he helps Khan out twice with some issues that he has. And so, yeah, I just don't really care that much about the human characters anymore. Either you give them significant things to do, or just get rid of them. Because, honestly, at this point, I'm starting to kind of get annoyed with the human characters to the point of either just get rid of them, or keep a certain amount of characters that are interesting to have. Because the constant rotating of characters is just kind of getting old. The writing is bland. Every interaction with the characters are straight up exposition dumps that they need to tell the audience what's happening even though the audience can pretty much know what is going on it's not very hard to like figure out what is happening with Khan and, and mini Khan and them finding out about scar King and what their plan is not very hard to follow i should also say the attempts at humor also fails. There are so many jokes in this movie that Brian Tyree Henry tried to make. No, was not working. He was really trying to be like the comedic relief in this movie, and it just was not working. It was not him, but it doesn't help that his character has now been reduced to just being the loud black guy. Similar to how Kevin Hart usually is in most of his movies. And I don't know if I have mentioned this to you guys, but I should mention that the marketing kind of hurts this film. Because you know how I mentioned a lot of Kong than Godzilla? Because that's essentially what this movie mostly focuses on the film has calm but the scene can't be said about Godzilla because he's hardly in the movie you see him near the beginning of the film and then you don't see his ass for the rest of the film until like the end of the second half beginning of the third act basically this movie was trying to be like marketed it as being like a buddy team up that doesn't really happen until near the end like you would think like oh they're gonna team up throughout this entire movie no they, they don't and so because of that re realistically this movie should have just been a calm film i don't know why they had godzilla there i'm not saying that to hurt any godzilla fans i'm legit saying that if you are a godzilla fan i think you will be very disappointed with what they do with godzilla because he's hardly in it this is really Khan's film i just don't see why they had to have them together when you're marketing it as being a team up when they aren't at all pretty much the majority of the movie until near the end i found myself enjoying the film but i also kind of walked away being a little disappointed it's by no means a terrible movie not at all it's not on the level of king of the monsters but it is a step down compared to the last movie and i thought the last movie was actually pretty good it was actually it knew what it was and this movie does too but i also think that it does go i think a little bit too much if you know what i mean like i, I do think that they are kind of now fully just dumping everything into the toy box and just kind of going all over rather than just actually making sure that they are playing this out if you know what I mean. So, at the very least, it, it is better than King of the Monsters, in my opinion. I think it's much better, because at the very least, the human characters aren't annoying the shit out of me, and ridiculous crap that was in that movie that I just did not like. At least it, it wasn't in this movie, but I am not gonna lie. It was kind of disappointing to me. So, I'm gonna give Godzilla x Con The New Empire, a 6 out of 10. I think it is okay. You know, it, it's an okay movie. And I hope that with the next film... Either they just make solo films for a bit and then have them come together again. Or if you're going to have them in there, have them both working together then against each other. Because it is kind of old when they sell things and then they're still kind of mad at each other. So, yeah. Now, I am officially done with the MonsterVerse reviews. Also, I am now done with the March films that I saw. I will be getting into the April films. Those should go by pretty quickly, hopefully. And it will be starting with Monkey Man. So yeah, look forward to those reviews and other movie TV show reviews coming soon.